What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to the next example. Given this table over here, we have to find each of these numbers. So there's actually four. Initially, I was gonna do it all in one video, but I decided to split it up into two parts just because I feel like it's gonna take a little while, especially the very last one, the fourth one, which is gonna be in the second video. So make sure that you're watching both parts. So for number one, we're told if h of x equals f of g of x, we have to find h prime of seven. And we gotta use this table over here. Now, actually, before getting into the question, I wanna sort of explain what this table means. What this table means is that these here are gonna be the values of f of x, this column, at these specific x values. This is gonna be the value of g of x at these specific x values. This is gonna be the value of f prime of x. That's gonna be the value of g prime of x at these specific x values. So for example, what would f4 be? Well, this would be the value of f of x at an x value of 4. So that's going to be 25. Or what would f prime 4 be? It would be uh, 5, right? The derivative of f prime of x at that x value of 4. What would g prime of 7 be? It's going to be the value of g prime x at an x value of 7. So it's going to be 2. Right, so that's how that table is used and we're gonna end up getting a bunch of these sorts of expressions when we're doing these questions and we're just gonna have to plug them in from the table. Okay, so starting with uh, number one, let's split this up, give myself some room here. So we got h of x equals f of g of x. And we have to find h prime of seven. Let's find first an expression for h prime x. Take the derivative of this. So notice we have a function, g of x, within another function, f of that function. So what we do is we take the derivative of the outside first. So that would be f prime. The inside function stays the same. And then we gotta multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which would be g prime of x like that. So this here is the general expression for h prime of x if h of x is equal to that. And so what's gonna happen in the other scenarios is that this expression here, as you could see, is just gonna be different. So this expression for the derivative of h of x is gonna be different. So h of prime x equals f prime of g of x times g prime of x. So what are they asking for? They're asking for h prime of seven. So all we do here is we plug in the x value of seven for all the x's. So we'll have f prime of g of seven times g prime of seven, like that. And so now we can just look at the table. What's g of seven gonna be? The value of g of x at an x value seven is six. So notice that inside this bracket, we'll have six times what's g prime of seven? g prime at an x value of seven is two. And then what is f prime x? The derivative of f prime x at an x value of six is four. So we'll have four times two, right? This ends up being four answer is eight. So that's the answer for the first scenario. H prime of seven would be eight. So we've got to apply the chain rule and then use the table to plug in the specific values when we're finding H prime of seven. All right, let's move on to number two. This one's definitely going to be a little more tricky. So we have H of X equals G of one plus the square root of f of x. Now, because there's a lot more going on here than over here, I'm actually just gonna write this as, um, instead of writing f of x, I'm just gonna write it as f for now. But as I mentioned in videos before, don't get confused, this is not going to be the independent variable, the x, that's still a function. So whenever we derive f, the derivative of f is gonna be f prime, right? It's not gonna be one, 
because it's not the independent variable that we're looking at. So instead of writing the square root of f of x, I'm going to write just the square root of f just to, uh, in my opinion, make it look nicer. You don't have to. And then instead of writing the square root of f, I'm actually going to change it to f to the power of a half, like that. Right, so I didn't take the derivative of anything yet. I just took this function and rewrote it in this format. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the derivative of h of x. So notice we have one function, 1 plus the square root of f, within another function, g of all of that. So we take the derivative of the outside, which would be g prime. Everything inside stays the same, like that. But then we got to multiply this by the derivative of the inside function. So if I take this and I write it over here, what's the derivative of this going to be? Well, the derivative of the 1 is just 0. And the derivative of f to the half is going to be, we bring the 1 half down, subtract 1 from the exponent. So 1 half minus 1 gives us negative a half. And then we have to multiply by the derivative of f, which remember is f prime, like that. So to simplify this, we can rewrite this as f prime over 2 times f to the half, like that. Right? I could take that f to the negative a half and bring it down to the denominator. It becomes uh, positive, the exponent becomes positive. Now notice just the f was to the power of negative a half. So I just brought down that, but that f prime still stays up top. So the derivative of this ends up being this. And remember when we take that derivative of f, it's not going to be 1, it's going to be f prime. So this is going to be f prime over 2. And then uh, instead of writing f to the half, I'm just going to write square root of f over here. And then same thing over here. I'm going to bring back that square root now. Because now when we're going to be plugging in numbers, I feel like it's going to be easier to see. Right? So if you were to leave that x here, and then we'd have an x here, then you'd have to put another bracket. That's why I like just putting the f, because now you got to introduce other brackets. But if you did leave it, this would end up being f of x, this would end up being f of x, this would end up being f prime x. I actually like to bring the x's back after. Because now, what we do is we do h, or sorry, we're looking for h prime of 4. What's that going to be? It's going to be g prime of 1 plus the square root of, we plug in 4 for x, so square root of f of 4, like that, times... Uh, f prime 4 all over 2 times the square root of f of 4, like that. And now we can plug everything in. So notice that f of 4 is 25, and then f prime 4, the value f prime x out of next value 4 is 5. So what we would have is g prime of 1 plus the square root of 25, right? f of 4, I'm plugging in 25 for that, this value right here, times f prime of 4, which is 5, over 2 times the square root of f of 4, which is 25. Right, so I just plugged in a bunch of values from this table for f of 4, these two f of 4s, and then this f prime of 4, which was just 5. And so now we could further simplify uh, g prime here. Square root of 25 is 5, plus 1 is 6. This would be 5, and then we'll have 2 times the square root of 25 is 5. Notice these 5s will cancel out. So we would end up having g prime of 6, the value g prime at an x value 6 is 3. These 5s cancel out, we're left with 1 over 2. 3 over 2 ends up being the final answer. So h prime of 4 is 3 over 2. All right, so if these functions get more complex, you got to be careful with the chain rule. These are good tests for, um, for your knowledge of the uh, 
of the chain rule. And actually the next two scenarios we're gonna do in the next video are gonna be even more complex. Maybe not the third one, but the fourth one definitely will be.